Hey everybody, today I'm going to be making light bulbs out of pickles. So I'm going to be making these pickles actually glow. They're going to radiate light. And I'll be talking about why it's working, and then we'll do a few experiments to try to understand it more. There's a few things that aren't quite understood about the light bulb pickle yet. Okay, so the first thing I need is a jar of pickles, so I'm going to be using some baby dill pickles here. So this is my pickle lighting device. I have two electrodes here, and there's going to be 120 volts AC on here. And I'm going to be sticking the pickle on here, and when I stick it on here and turn it on, mysteriously the pickle is going to light up a really yellow color, a bright yellow. Let's see if it actually works. Okay, let's grab our pickle, stick it on here, Then turn on the power. Three, two, one. Nothing happening yet. I can see some bubbling. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. Turn off the light. So how is this pickle actually making light here? Well the reason is due to the sodium ions in the pickle. So when an electron combines with the sodium ion in there, it releases a photon of light. And that photon of light is actually the same photon of light that it gets released in a low pressure sodium vapor lamp. So the pickles were producing light around 589 nanometers. Okay, so our sodium vapor lamp is heated up now. So now this is a monochromatic light source. There's only around one wavelength of light coming off of this. It's actually two wavelengths, but they're really close together, so it's basically one coming off of it. So let's see if the wavelength of light coming off of our pickle here is the same as the low pressure sodium vapor lamp. Okay, let's turn on the pickle. Three, two, one. Look at that, it's like the same color. <laughs> That's the sodium vapor lamp behind it. And then the pickle, it's the same color here. What's interesting to note here is that in order to make the light, the pickle has to get dried out first. So when you first turn it on, nothing happens, even though there's a lot of current going through the pickle. But what has to happen is those electrodes have to dry out a little bit. And once that electrode's dry enough, then a spark gap can occur. So a plasma can <laughs> form in between there and it can energize those sodium ions. Now what's interesting about this pickle light is you'll notice that the light is only coming from one side of the pickle. Even though this is AC voltage, so it's alternating back and forth. So there's no real specific electrode that should have one thing happening versus another. Now a lot of resources on this pickle light say that it's currently not known why one side lights up versus the other. So here's what I think is happening here. I think that inevitably one side of the pickle has a higher resistance than, than the other one. So one nail pickle interface has a higher resistance than the other one. And it can depend on the specific pickle or it can depend on how dirty the nail is on each one. So whatever one has higher resistance, it's going to dissipate more power and heat than the other one. And that's going to dry out the pickle even further. And so there's going to be more spark gaps and heat dissipating through there that's going to generate more light. So to test this theory, let's put a pickle on and see what side lights up. And then I'm going to switch that pickle on the electrodes and see if that same st side stays lit up. Okay, now I'm going to switch it. See if it stays on that side of the pickle. Yep. <laughs> so you can see that the same side stayed lit up. So that probably meant that that pickle, for some reason, had a higher resistance on that side. So because the sodium ions have a specific wavelength of light that they can emit when an electron combines with them, it means that if you had other ions in there, they would have some characteristic color or wavelength that they would emit as well. So let's see what happens when we combine it with potassium hydroxide. So first I'll make a potassium hydroxide solution. 
And then I have some cucumbers here. So in order to get the potassium hydroxide solution into the cucumbers, what I'm going to do is stick it in the vacuum chamber. The vacuum chamber will suck out all the air that's in the cucumbers, and then I'm gonna let the air back in and let the pressure back in, and that will push the potassium hydroxide solution into the holes that were previously air holes in there. So it'll suck it right into the cucumber and it will instantly pickle it. Turn on the vacuum chamber. So all the bubbles you see are the dissolved air coming out of the water and then also coming out of the cucumbers as well. Uh oh, now it's really starting to boil in there. <laughs> Okay, now let's let the air back in. So you can see that the air has been sucked out of this and it's been replaced with this potassium hydroxide solution. Okay, let's put our potassium hydroxide pickle in here. Let's see what color it actually glows now. So this potassium hydroxide pickles still look yellow. I thought they'd look a bit more lavender. Okay, here's our pickle graveyard over here. <laughs> this looks pretty morbid and it stinks really bad. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And remember to check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab experiment boxes. And remember to subscribe if you haven't yet and also hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.